All right, so t this week we're going to finish the uh, interview with Callie Smart about narcissistic abuse. I put up part one last week, and I'm getting a really good response from it. You guys are really enjoying this interview, and I hope that it's helping you both personally and also in terms of your writing, writing antagonistic characters and possibly villains. It's really kind of fun to explore the possibilities there. So I'm not going to say much more. Let's just hop right back in to the second half of the interview. Here we go. You know. It is. It's the psychological abuse. And for me and most people in this space who have really endured this over a long period of time, for me, I got PTSD and um, it just came to a point where I could literally not function on any level. I would go to my office and I would sit there for eight hours and I would stare at the wall thankfully I had an office to myself because other people would think what is happening or maybe not thankfully maybe they'd actually check on me but and then I'd drive back to my house I you know I felt like I might forget to pick up my kids I didn't know how to grocery shop I so I I I felt so I did reach out to my mom to help me and I did get um medical leave from work to be able to get my head back in because I felt yeah. and I think this would be important for writers if they're speaking from a victim standpoint you know PTSD um, there's a pretty standard list of symptoms and, and and things in that area but it's it's you're trapped in your own body knowing you should do something but you literally can't physically move the mm -hmm. it's so debilitating you can't get you want to scream and you can't it's kind of like being in one of those real life nightmares even though you're not in the situation that you were in mm -hmm. anymore you're caught in this like interworld and you can't function and it was it's really terrifying Right. And then that almost perpetuates it. So I also like as a response, um, when it really kind of started with the abuse and, and things like that, I lost 20 pounds in two weeks and I started having panic attacks. And I think the panic attacks led up to PTSD, but the panic attacks would last, I'd have 15 a day. Wow. And I would be shaking, shaking, shaking for, you know, 20 minutes, um, then be able to calm down and then they would start again. And even that physical act really made you lose a lot of weight. Um, right. because I couldn't eat and your body is, it's like you're running a marathon, right. And, um, trying to keep up and you can't sleep. Um, but then leading to the PTSD where, yeah, I felt the, it was, I wouldn't even be able to talk to you right now. Like there's just, right. um, so yeah. And, and of course, during that time, he was just like, you just need to forget about it. You just need to move on. She's out of the picture. You just got to forgive me. We're just going to keep going. And I'm like, I'm in a hole in the ground with my broken leg and he's wanting to run a 5k today. You know, it's just like, that's what it felt like. He was totally ignoring any but I was also immersed in that environment. So I think getting yourself out, right, separating yourself from that environment. But when you have kids, you do anything for them and they start right. to threaten you, right? They're like, you know, he would say, I'm going to gonna bankrupt you. I'm going to take the children. I'm going to, you know, make you lose your job. I'm going to, you know, like do yeah. all these things. And you start, you believe that because you're like, well, yeah, maybe he could, or he could do, you know, and he wouldn't leave the house because if he leaves the house, then he could maybe not get the house and the divorce. So then you're trapped there too. And, um, and mine did start to start to be physical. And that's when I was really like, I got to get out, but that can be part of it too, under the umbrella. Mm -hmm. So not to say that it's like there's physical abuse over here and narcissist over here, it's all in the under abuse, but the, the manipulative part and now can still continue 
even though I don't live with him or anything, but it still can seep through when right. we do a hockey game, when he sees me at the, when to pick it up the kids, or he sends me an email, or he still, even though I haven't had my text or calls on for two years now, good for me. Yeah, um, go you. He will use apps to, to call or text from a different number. You know how you can like. Oh, uh, yeah. And he'll do that. So technology isn't always your friend. <laughs> In that sense, no, because he, yeah. Uh, so um, just to try to, just to try to put down some, some things that are concrete. I'm, I'm yeah. just kind of thinking about kind of some, some things that it, that it always looks like when you're dealing with a narcissist. So one of them we talked about is, um, oh, what was the first thing I was thinking of? Oh, he, would you say it's, it's, that this is correct, that they, they don't want to deal with consequences for one thing. So they want to do whatever they want. But then I was thinking about that when you were saying he was going, just, just forgive me, just let it go. Well, you know, you got to have a consequence for that. And he doesn't want to have a consequence. 100%. He just wants to move on. So they don't want to deal with consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we talked about them being several steps ahead of you to try and gaslight you or make you look bad. Do you find that he plays the victim a lot? I know that that's something oh, I've 100%. seen. Yeah. You're doing this to me. Right. And again, right. it's situations that maybe don't even involve it. There's nothing to do with that. And I'd still, it's still like I'm picking on him. It's like, and it, this isn't even about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So there's that. There's being addicted to drama. And I don't know if that's, if everyone understands what that means. Um, it just kind of is like when they create drama around themselves and create drama between people in their lives, try to like pit people against each other. Mm -hmm. I've seen people do that. And I've, I've literally had people say, okay, human beings don't do that to people they love. Like mothers do not do that to children they love. People do not do that to their spouse, you know, but narcissists do, you know, because they thrive on the drama. So have you seen that as well? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's again, this kind of baiting, like mm -hmm. just to get a reaction. Right. Is, yes. Is really what it's about. Like, you know, I know she likes that person. So I'm going to bring up that person and say that they said something about it just to see if it like, just right. you know, pings anything. And if I'm like, what, hey, why would it, you know what I mean? And then they're like, oh, this is awesome. This is great. I'm going to sit back and get the popcorn, you know? And it's just like, right. it's so mean, it's so right. mean. It yeah. is, it is. And it's rough to deal with. I'm sorry you had to deal with that for so long. Um, it, but I, I, I do kind of want to circle back to something you said before, which was that, I think in terms, especially of writing it, the worldview is really important. So you said that they're coming from a place of everyone's out to get them. And I think that's really important to remember because it's not necessarily going to change the way in which you have to deal with them, but it's not so much that they're doing it in their heads. They're not thinking I'm doing this to be mean. They're thinking they're doing it to protect themselves. It's really coming from a place of fear and they're just sort of trying to be preemptive about it, but they do it in a way that harms other people. That's, that's hurtful. Um, so that's something that that's probably, like I said, I mean, some people don't like to look at it that way because it feels like we're trying to have sympathy with this person, which maybe, I guess, depending on how you look at it, you are, but just in the sense of understanding it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't set boundaries. I mean, you still have to deal with them in the same way, because as you said, they're not going to get any better. So, right. I mean, what, what are you, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, it is a personality disorder, right? Mm -hmm. It is been listed as a disorder. It is a twistedness of the personality um so I, I do have sympathy mm -hmm. now some would yeah so maybe some would agree with you in terms of like um they know exactly what they're doing they know exactly right. what they're saying and they're doing it on purpose and there's you have should have no sympathy for them but yeah I mean for me, I'm always looking for trying to understand um, the person behind, like, how can they even continue in their life in this way and just continue to burn bridge after bridge after bridge and not see or have any self-reflection? The reason is because they think they're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. right? They think, like you said, they're protecting themselves, or it's like right. some, it's a psychosis of some sort that's telling them in a really messed up way that 
there everyone's out to get you you can't trust anyone so only be out for yourself and they're probably thinking about you in this way and you know just this kind of little super evil voice which sounds like a miserable existence mm-hmm. so how can you i mean nobody in this that treats anyone this way is ha- is happy they'll, right. t- they'll try to tell you that they're happy They'll mm-hmm. show you their new girlfriend. They'll show you their new house and car and how happy in their job. And, you know, just, but there's no way that someone that mean to other human beings is happy. There's just, mm-hmm. so. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, you almost, um, and, and I think the tricky part is, is there probably is if they were to go to therapy and say i'm a narcissist that there is help for them and that they could get better the Mm. problem is that you have to go and say i'm a narcissist right yeah and i don't think any of them want to because that would threaten everything that they've Mm -hmm. kind of held up um but i do think addiction is a huge part of it too that's a whole other realm i think this is almost an addiction this Mm -hmm. it's it's again a psychosis a different um it's an addiction to drama addiction to themselves addiction to the feeling superior and there's and and i mean i i don't know what the percentage is but i bet it's pretty high that these people also have other addiction problems whether you know gambling alcohol you know all those kinds of things to again mask themselves right Mm -hmm. people use those things for all kinds of purposes but it would be a way to cover up who they truly are because if they truly showed themselves that they think the world just wouldn't be there for them so they can never show themselves because maybe they did as a small child and it and they used or they you know because this is a generational thing um you know and and what makes a child come out and say I don't want to be like that and comes from a healing or someone who then starts to gravitate towards those same right behaviors and then goes into the same kind of like because the the words to be honest the words are exactly the same I'll see like text threads from other people who are in these relationships and mm-hmm. like he could have wrote that they have the same not very bright lines yeah so if you know one you've known them all now they're right. all slightly different like i said you know like there's a little bit difference in each nuance of story and person and things like that but generally it's like the same crap over and right. over and over again i've seen the same email come from him 400 times yeah. And my best, you know, my friend from my support group could show me and she'd be like, it's the same thing he writes me. So it's like, it's almost this, when you're saying kind of evil voice or the, you know, the dark side of someone or this, whatever you use in your books, right? For, right. It really is the same thing in each person. Mm-hmm. Just like I feel like there's the good peace in each po- each person or the possibility the capability of seeing humanity and the goodness and the um the altruistic selves wanting to help us and really be there that that voice can be very similar right that voice mm-hmm. of encouragement and love and peace and talking and those kinds of things this voice can sound the same over oh, right. And it's just not as creative either, though. It's very, like, <laughs> once you, you almost have to laugh at it. You're like, seriously, yeah. it's the same freaking thing. Right. Over right. and over and over again. So. Which is, yeah, which is a coping mechanism, I was going to say. And I think that's why, yeah. too, you said at the beginning that having words for it, being able to define it, is very freeing. And I know that I've experienced that because I um, I had an experience where I was trying to explain it to someone, but it was when I was first getting into it, I didn't have a very good grasp on how to explain it to someone else. And then I found an article and I sent it to, I believe it was my sister. And she wrote me back and she was like, oh my gosh, that is exactly what that person does. You know what I mean? And it's just, yeah. it makes you feel not alone. And you're going, okay, I'm not insane. This is actually a behavior. You know? yeah. Well, and I also, I mean, I do want to really stand up though for, because narcissism is thrown a lot around, 
right? It is. It's like yes. PTSD is thrown a lot around. Like, oh, I got PTSD from this, you know, sandwich or whatever. And, <laughs> you know, there, but there is like real trauma that happens from right. dealing with these people in your life. It's really horrible. And also there's real narcissism of personality disorder that, you know, just because somebody has road rage or or somebody's right, right. acting like a jerk at a party doesn't mean that they have narcissistic personality disorders. Right. Yes. And so as a, you know, an authentic author or someone who's really writing about this to make sure that like, it's not just like the, like you know, that kind of covert, non-covert thing that I talked yeah, about. Yeah. And that it is a really serious disorder that these people don't get over. Mm-hmm. It's not... It's not like you can go in and out of it. This is their, who right. they are. And without really dramatic therapeutic help, no. And that most of them that I've read die alone, really sadly, because um, they have burned all the bridges with loved right. ones, parents, siblings, their children, and um, are really, really lonely. Yeah. Not all, not all, but... Um, you know, once people kind of figure this out, that this person doesn't really do what they say they're going to do, that that people start to stand up and notice, and they do get worse as they age, which is kind of a weird thing. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, when I met my current husband, I made him take a lot of personality tests when we first were dating, which maybe- I do not blame you for that, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what about this? Uh, what's your relationship with your mother? What do you, how would you handle this situation? You know, those kids. Yeah. Like, so he's probably like, uh, no, <laughs> I, I explained the situation, but I also was just shocked by, you know, action speaks louder than words. Right. Mm-hmm. So he would say he would do something and he did it. And he would do it. Interesting. It's sometimes Interesting. as simple as that. Right. Whereas this right. other person would say something and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't follow through. He wouldn't, you know, his words sounded so perfect. And then it, in the end, it, they didn't, there was no match. So Mm -hmm. that was really important to me. And really, I took notice to look at that and not what somebody said, because these people sound amazing. Right. Usually amazing speakers. They know every possible word to make you feel like the best person the most loved, the most everything. And, and in the end, they, they don't follow right. through. So, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and thank you for clarifying that, but the word, because there's a lot of words that we throw around like that. Another one that I think of is psychopath, sociopath. I mean, you can yeah. say someone got mad and threw a book and they were being a psychopath, but that's not the same thing as being an actual, actual. psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> And that is on that so, spectrum, yeah. though, the psychopath right. and the sociopath, like you said, that is like narcissism to an extreme. And I don't feel right. like that's in my situation. But right. Some people, obviously, you know, domestic mm-hmm. abuse where women are killed horribly because they have come to someone who is capable of doing that kind of thing um, right. is is really, really horrible. So, yes, thank you. Those kinds of words, mm-hmm. like yeah you gotta be careful it can be them, funny yeah. but these are real life situations that right. are serious and ruin and 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 really create problems in people's lives so to just you know the toxic part i also have heard um and i probably gotta go here soon but um I know <laughs> toxic relationships or even even toxic families are really defined by allowing behaviors to continue and that there's no like you said consequence or no Mm -hmm. um no boundary right and that's what I saw a lot of too in his own family to say hey this weird thing happened or this isn't okay and nobody talks about it right Mm -hmm. and so that I think can perpetuate for generations too. So even in my own life, encouraging my children to say, you can speak up and say, this is not okay. Right. Or yeah. at work with a coworker that's being real weird. No, you speak up because that's how these systems keep going. These, how these toxic right. families keep going. This is how you get deeper and deeper into these things. Not that it's your fault, but really that's owning your voice that we talk about all the time, speaking up for yourself 
you know, which is something I probably yeah. should have done earlier in my marriage to say, this is weird that I always am asking you at the wrong time, right? right. And getting mad at yeah. me. I should have, but when you're young and I, I wanted to be a good wife. So right. then, and they, and he knows I want to be good, right? Mm -hmm. Not in a like, I'm perfect. And I, you know, I'm like the little housewife. Cause I'm definitely, that's, if you knew me, that's not me. I'm actually <laughs> the opposite. I do not know. Um, but yeah, there's, there's things that mm -hmm. you should continue to speak up right away. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and, yeah, and I feel like the world is kind of, because it's, you brought up a couple of good things there. I mean, one is that most of us, because we're good people and just genuinely want to live happy, peaceful lives, we don't want to rock the boat. And yeah. they exploit that. They know how to exploit that. Um, but the other thing exactly. is the world we live in is very much teaching us that if we speak up, we get stomped on, you know, on social media, on anything to do with politics, on anything like that. And so we have to learn to speak up, even though, because I mean, and I think you can probably attest to, if you do speak up with a narcissist, it's not going to be pretty. It's not like if you speak up once, everything goes away, you know, they are going to yell at you, but it's only, you have to be able to defend yourself and your boundaries, you know? Yeah. And that's, that takes that's taken a lot of practice over the years and there's also times mm -hmm. where i know if i speak up i'm going to get the wrath of whatever is coming at me right. that day i prepare myself i hang out with friends i talk to my husband i get my mom on the phone i go i have my team my things ready because if if it doesn't go on me the wrath is going somewhere and it's right. probably going to my kids I'm telling mm -hmm. you, there's no, if, if they're not picking on you, they're picking on somebody. It, it right. has to be. If they're not love bombing you, they're love bombing somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it's, but there's times where, yeah, I've had to like prepare myself, get my troops ready, get my, you know, when you run in a marathon, you don't just show up, right? You like, you got your outfit, you got your good running shoes, you got your, um, I'm a runner, but, uh, <laughs> you're ready for the race and you have friends along the way on your water stops and you do, you know, so that's really what I kind of feel like when I go into these things, because before it would have just crumbled me and I'd have to leave work and I'd have to go to bed. I'd have to, you know, like it would just wreck me for days and I right. actually have to live and get a job and do the dishes and, you know, pick my kids up at school. And so I've learned over the years, those kind of tools to handle that because it will come at you mm. so hard. And I've had to take, I will hundred percent always take it over my kids. Now you can't always control yeah. that, but I think a lot of people I know in other situations, maybe from that are siblings or thinking they'll take it and so that their sister doesn't have to take it right. they'll take it and that can be in all abuse situations right that can mm -hmm. be like i'll take it so my mom doesn't have to um but i've i've seen that too like i know it's coming but i have to bring this up right it's you know the kid has to go to school or you know it, it's just yeah. something you can't go around and i know the wrath of whatever is coming at me and I have to be strategic of how to protect my heart, my mind, because the trauma will go and um, put me right back in that situation of being threatened. Um, so, yeah. 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 Well, hey, thanks so much for being here with us today. I, I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. And, you know, like we said, narcissism, it's hard to pin down. So I feel like at the end of any kind of given conversation, a lot of people are still going, Okay, so now, like, what is it? <laughs> because right. it's so hard to to really define. But I think we've given them a, a pretty good foundation here for kind of what it's like to deal with narcissistic abuse. So thank you for sharing that. And can I just say that I, I applaud you for getting out of the situation. Not only have I experienced it, I have a good friend who has recently gone through kind of what you did. She and her husband divorced, and she's kind of told me, you know, in hindsight, I can see how toxic it was. And so it takes a lot of, a lot of strength to get out of something like that. And also now to recognize it and try to educate people about it. So thank you for doing that. And you know, you're, you're a very inspiring person. 
Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And I feel like we could talk for a lot, lot longer about yeah, this subject. Definitely. But thank you also for caring about it because I do think a lot of people are affected by this and they just don't know what it's called. Right. Or as in characters in books that, you know, so many people deal with this. And if you can accurately share it, maybe someone even just reading a fictional book, right. saying like, that's like me in real life, that they would mm -hmm. then be able to get help. Um, and in fact, like you know, one that actually does come to mind, have you ever read Anna Karenina? Oh. Okay, I, I read it a long time ago, and I didn't know what it was when I read it, other than it was a classic. But it's interesting because she is very clearly a narcissist. I mean, every classic behavior, you see it in that book. And that was written by Tolstoy in the 1800s. So he saw it and recognized yeah. it, even though he wouldn't have the same words we have for it. So yeah, it's something that's very prevalent. And um, we do yeah. see it in literature sometimes, but not very often, because as you said, most people don't know what it is. They wouldn't know how to write it into a book. And so I, I do feel kind of strongly about educating people about it. Yeah, for sure. And I think more resources have come out even in the last 10 years that I've been, for sure. you know, even when I kind of, my eyes were open, you know, there's just so many more resources. So that's good that there's people that can, some really good literature and books and, mm -hmm. and counselors. Cause I think also that a lot of counselors didn't know what to look for either, even like right. marriage counselors or, you know, other, other people that are in these circles or even like you for your friend, you know what I mean? Like if I had a friend who was going through this, I wouldn't have known what to tell right. her or how to help her. Um, and so, yeah, the more that we can all recognize and be like, you got to get out there. It's not going to get better as right. much as they, you don't want to hear that. It's not going to get better. And for you and everyone in your life, including your children, please get out and, right. uh, and get out safely. And that's that. Yeah. Go, go find, go find your happiness. Just go be happy because you're not going <laughs> to be happy, happy in this relationship. <laughs> yes, I appreciate. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, so I would encourage everyone, if they're curious about this, you can even just do a Google search or like I said, on Pinterest, signs of narcissism. There's all kinds of articles and things. Um, do you have any other particular resources that you want to mention? Um, so I guess I'm more interested in the um, mom and children scenario, like the co-parenting kind of thing. And there's a woman called um, One Mom's Battle. Her name is Tina. And she has a pretty robust website and resources for someone who is battling a narcissist in court. Interesting. And that has its own whole world. But even her, her resources on canned responses would be perfect for a book because you know like I said all narcissists kind of have the same right words come at you and you have to you have to respond as a co-parent because then you look like you don't you, you have to respond right right otherwise you look like a negligent parent or the courts don't look at that well so right. you need to say something but you also don't want to you know, boil right. the pot over. So what do you say? And she's got two pages worth of like, even just that one resource. And she has a ton of canned responses that you can write that say, thank you for your, you know, opinion on the situation. I do not agree. And here's, you know, like how to diffuse, but still stay strong, use your voice. And, um, you know, even, so I think she, she's been a really good go-to for me. Um, in, team, in terms of the co-parenting. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of other good resources and, and Amazon books and, and things okay. like that that um, are out there, so. Okay, yeah, I will link that one up in the show notes so that people can find it. But yeah, as we said, if they just do a Google search, they'll find all kinds of stuff. It's, it's very readily available, so. Um, yeah, thank you so much again for being here, Kelly, and for sharing your story. And uh, maybe as a kind of a wrap up, do you have any kind of, advice for anybody who might be experiencing this in some part of their lives? Um, yes. Find a support group. I think okay. that that, um, a therapist on your own for sure, right? Not just a couple's therapist, if you can, but sometimes therapy is really expensive or hard to right. get a hold of. And if you don't have resources or you don't want your 
husband to know or wife or to know mm -hmm. that you're going to therapy, right? Find a support group. There are tons out there. There are ones online, especially now since the pandemic. Right, and right. You can share your story and then know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And um, and there will be people of varying, you know, people that are still married and stuck and haven't really come to full you know, conclusion of what this means for them. And there's people like my sense myself that have been out for a number of years, but still have to deal with them on a weekly or daily basis because of kids. And so I think when you surround yourself with people on all kind of parts of the journey, it really mm -hmm. gives you hope and right. to see like that you're not crazy in this cycle of abuse. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that is just a really powerful piece to not because even if we are with a therapist with an expert it's it's different right than a right. person like you and me talking as friends as people who have shared have a shared experience and and being like okay I can get out of this too or someone that would understand because yeah I right. talk to other friends and although they're very caring and like Kelly that sucks that you went through this they don't know in that same way or how to right. help me and respond mm -hmm. you know and you know they're like well can't you just do this and I'm like no because he's not normal right right in a normal situation yeah normal abuse uh, divorce that would be totally appropriate to do but this is different <laughs> so right. you need those friends and those people in your lives that know this yeah so I would say support group is number one and, you know, it strikes me that that's almost like your, it has to be your first go-to response because like all abusers, the first thing they do is isolate you. So you've got to break out of that isolation if you ever want to break out completely, you know? Right. Well, and that's a, that's the thing with therapy too, you know, like they don't want you to go because then the therapist is going to open it up too, right? So right. You, so I know people in some of the support groups I've been part, you know, did this in secret or said this was like a girl's wine club or this was you know like so if even if you have to say it's something else to get out of the house or say I have a work zoom meeting but I need to do it private right that is so important and then they can make you have a plan because sometimes it's really dangerous to leave abusive right. situations so in, in that regard too that these people can help give you resources and a plan and, and and be those friends that you really need in that time especially if you don't yeah, if you've been isolated from all your girlfriends and they're like, oh, you know, Kelly doesn't care about me anymore. She only does this when it's really because you've been in this horrible relationship. Um, you'll right. get a community of people around you that care about you and are going to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Right. All right. Well, thanks again. And, um, you know, if there's good luck with everything, I, <laughs> I hate to say good luck with your narcissist because, you know, I know it's a, <laughs> It's really not that simple, but um, yeah, just I, I hope everything goes well for you. And again, thank you for sharing your story to help other people. Yes, of course. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure.